work ethic, uh, their commitment to, to being at their best every day, uh, not only on the football field but in the classroom, uh, resonates throughout our program. And we have, a, we have a lot of 18 and 19 year olds that are in that locker room that learn from these, these four guys and, and, our, and our, other ca our other seniors. And uh, you know, it's been an unbelievable ride. I tell people all the time, I'm afraid I'm gonna wake up and we're gonna still be getting ready for Butler. But uh, uh, we're gonna enjoy this one today. Uh, not very often you go 16 and 0. All right, we'll open it up now for questions for the student athletes. Remember to identify yourself, name and affiliation and who you are asking the question to. Anyone with questions, raise your hand, please. We'll start here in the second row. Uh, Jeff Kopak with the form in Fargo. Um, take us through the last play, James. Uh, it's a play that we were familiar with. Um, they ran it in first drive. They ran it on that fourth and one, but he threw the shovel pass to the running back, uh, the one that got reviewed. It was on film all year. We knew that when they got into the set, they were going to run a pick play. And honestly, they got us in a good call. Um, they picked our guy. I just left my guy and knew that they were going to throw it and trusted that he was going to make the throw to the flat and not to the guy I'm supposed to cover. And uh, I made the play, and, and the rest is, rest is history. Next question right next to him. Tori Reddit College Football. Trey, talk about um, opening the fourth quarter with the run on third and 22. What did you see and just kind of what was going through your mind on that? I was kind of just working through my progression. <clears throat> worked to Christian first, uh, and then was going to step up and worked my over. Um, and kind of the Red Sea just kind of parted. Uh, it took off. In my head, I was thinking, you know, third and 22, you know, maybe get half, you know, get in a better, better field position uh, for Riney. Uh, but, yeah, Jimmy made a big block, and I think Phoenix was the other one. Uh, I just specifically remember Jimmy's big block. Uh, uh, you know, maybe don't even get the first down without him. So I just shout out to those guys. Next question, Steven. James, Stephen Hawkins with the AP. So which play is going to stand out for you when you look back on it many years from now, the interception or the fake field goal? Meeting everybody up on stage is what's going to stand out. <laughs> um, you know, at the beginning of the day, we said we were going to meet everybody up on stage and, and with the victory and end this season and this run the right way. Um, and as seniors, uh, that's what we wanted. It's the number one goal every single year. And, you know, to go out on top as a senior is an incredible feeling. And, that's what I'll remember. I'll remember all the faces that I saw on that stage and thanking everybody that, you know, had given their um, hard work and hard uh, effort into, you know, everything that goes on with NDSU football. And uh, I just feel so fortunate. Go next front row on the aisle. I'm at Alex at AM 1100, the flag in Faro. Question for Ben. Can you reflect a little bit about, about, about this the, the, the nice ball game and just this run? Yeah, you know, um, the word I like to describe for the, these seniors is, is re resilient. Um, and so we had a, there's a lot of question marks and things like that at the beginning of the year. And um, to be able to be in this position to go out on top, um, it's been pretty special. And when you're playing with guys like the, the 14 seniors and guys like Trey Lance, um, it just makes it easy. You know, he makes people around him better. And um, this, this coaching staff and, and everybody involved is, has made it very easy to, to be successful here. Uh, Eric Peterson, uh, former newspaper in Fargo. This is for Jackson. Uh, just, just 16 and 0, backing up a 15 and 0 season. What, what does that mean to, to be able to put together another season like that? Uh, you know, I think it's a, it shows a lot about the program, um, who we are. Uh, I think you know, uh, at the beginning of the year, there were a lot of new faces and there were a lot of people that had a lot of questions about how good we were going to be. Um, you know, my, myself, I was a, a new person. I had never really played. Trey had never really played. Coach Entz was a was a coordinator. Um, <laughs> but uh you know we kind of knew what we had in our locker room you know maybe everybody else didn't but uh we had a we had an idea we were going to be pretty good this year and uh to to see that all you know come to reality uh over a six month season or whatever it is has just been an unbelievable journey so we'll start next on the far right and then come back to the left again ross uglum visor report <coughs> jackson for you again I would say, Jam, you probably got more than you guys would have liked between the 20s, but as you have done all year, boat up in the red zone, forced some field goals. What was it about your red zone defense <coughs> this game and all year long that was so dominant? Uh, that's just something that we pride ourselves on at a very high level. Um, you know, Coach Enza said it before that you know, at the end of the day, they don't count how many yards you get. You know, you got to get yourself and the ball in the end zone. And uh, uh, we have a saying around here that says field goals don't get you beat, and, and that kind of showed up today. You know, we, we did everything we could to keep them out of the end zone and uh, came up with some big plays down at the goal line. So, Back here on the left. Brad, Super Talk 1270. This question is for Trey. What does it mean to go undefeated, or not undefeated, but uh, not have any interceptions this whole season? 
Uh, I think it's just a huge testament to the guys around me, uh, whether it's offensive line, uh, keeping me clean, uh, the receivers, the running backs, tight ends, catching the ball, uh, and also the coaching staff. Uh, Got to give all the credit to them. They put me in positions to be successful. Um, you know, it, fortunate enough that it worked out that way this year, but, you know, it wasn't like that was something I was worried about. Back here on the right. Steve Hallstrom, AM 1100 Radio. Trey, uh, for you again, uh, the play that had everybody buzzing in the first half was that time you carried the pile about six, seven yards with some big guys pushing you. Uh, social media was blowing up with that play. Can you walk us through what that was like, first taking on the linebacker, breaking that tackle, and just seeing that pile keep going to get a big first down after they had scored on the opening drive to take a lead on you guys? Yeah, we, I mean, we wanted to start fast. Uh, we got the ball in our hands. Uh, that play specifically, uh, just you know, tried to take him on. Uh, it was the Mike 52. Uh, he was a really good player, big player, uh, and, and physical, and just fortunate enough it worked out. Uh, O-line pushed me about another 15 yards as they've done all season long. Uh, so just, again, just those guys just took over the game for us. We'll go back to the right in the second row. Uh, Jeff Cope back with the form. Ben, on the fake field goal, I think you had a key block on that. Can you describe that play? And, and the second part is NDSU doesn't run it very often, a, a fake anything. I think that was the first time since 03. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, our coaches have confidence in us players um, to make plays like that. And, you know, James, um, smart guy, smart football player. And so um, it was it was the look that we had, had been running um, this whole week. And so... Um, when you're prepared like that, it, it makes it easy to just go out there and cut it loose. Um, and so, um, yeah, it was just just had to go cut it loose and, and make the play. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, we'll dismiss the student athletes. Congratulations on your season. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in there. And once they're off, we'll go next to questions for head coach Matt Enns. Open it up now for questions for the head coach. Start over here on the right in the second row. Coach, um, Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Yep. Um, starting quarterback, 16 games, zero interceptions. You don't even dream of that as a coach, do you? It, you, you never plan on it happening like that. No, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, Trey's just uh, extremely efficient with the football. Uh, you saw today, if he, if he doesn't like it, he's going to pull it down, and he has the ability to, uh, to gain valuable yards. I think our offensive staff has done an outstanding job of putting him in good situations going all the way back to September uh, when maybe we didn't trade shift in motion nearly as much as you might have saw today. Uh, and we just continually tried to spoon feed our offense to Trey. Uh, and, and guys, he, he's learned it faster than anybody. And he probably had a great grasp of it a year ago. But um, there's no doubt in my mind he has the best quarterback coach in the world. And he probably had as good a mentor in Easton Stick a year ago as you could ask for. Go first row here on the right. Ross Uglin, Bison Report. Coach, with the uh, the game plan in general on the offensive side, Trey ends up with, with 30 carries. Your, your tailbacks end up with uh, 10. Is mm -hmm. that something that you knew the QB run was going to be heavy going into today? Uh, we did. They hadn't seen much quarterback run all year. Uh, maybe that's just maybe it was just this year in the CAA. Uh, it wasn't a big quarterback run year, but they hadn't defended it. Uh, and all of a sudden, they were going to start defending us with a bunch of single high defense. Uh, you're going to run out of bodies real quick. Your post player is going to have to make some tackles. And uh, just like the, the third down play, they, they got into single high defense and back to the ball coverage, and, and we were able to make an ex explosive play. Go next to the second row. Uh, Jeff Kopak, the form. Um, James leaving his man, is that uncommon to do that in that situation? I'm, I'm, I'm glad he did in that situation. It, it, it had happened a couple times before. They missed a throw to the back uh, in, in the corner of the end zone. Uh, he overthrew it, probably had too much on it, came right back to it later. I think the quarterback took a little bit off it and put a little air on the ball. James, he jumped it. And, and that's what playmakers do at that moment. And, and he was going to make a play. You know, you talk about a young man that played quarterback for us, made the move, asked to be moved because he wanted to be on the football field. He's been the quarterback of Code Green for a couple years now. And uh, he, he's, a, he's an – I hope he gets into coaching because he, he's got it. He's, he's got the ability. He understands the game. And uh, what a super play. And uh, it didn't surprise me that he scored. I, I didn't think he would score. But if there was anyone who could score on the, on the fake field goal, it was going to be him. Coach Stephen Hoggins with the AP. On the fake field goal, was that a straight call or was that a look he had to see before he took off? Uh, it was a call. We, James Madison has not let very many people score touchdowns. But the one thing that they had shown is 
they lined up the exact same way every time after a touchdown to block the extra point and or field goal. So it was, we had them on the left hash. We knew they'd overload to the field trying to block it where the quarterback was going to have to push the ball. Um, it was a, they were seven by four. We knew we had numbers back over there and took advantage of it. I'm, it was my goal just to keep the chains moving at that time. But uh, uh, again, for us to be able to win the explosive plays during the course of the day uh, was huge. Isaac Dinesen, Bison Information Network. Uh, just talk about your defense on that final drive, bowing up after some penalties on that drive before the, end, before the interception. Well, it definitely. I mean, you know, pass interferences are going to happen. There, there was a number of them uh, early in the game. And so they probably even themselves out. We've got to do a better job. Uh, guys were so just antsy to get after the quarterback. Uh, that, that's frustrating, but I understand the, the situation of the game. You know, we, we, we tried to change up coverage as much as we could. We jumped into some cover two. We played a little bit more of bracket coverage, which I think caused them some problems at time. Uh, you know, they tried that trick play, that throwback, and we did a great job of knocking it down. You know, our kids' red zone defense is something we practice multiple times during the week. I think our coaches do an outstanding job of preparing for it. A lot of offenses, you know, start to water down or, or, or really narrow their, their package down there. And, and our kids... Like, like you heard today, I've seen it 100 times in practice. We knew what was coming. We'll go here to the right and then back to the left on the front row. Ross Huggum with Bisonport. Coach, if you don't mind, could you kind of run me through what goes through your mind after you send in a call like that? I mean, are you trying not to give off nonverbals? The fake. I'm talking about the fake field goal. Sure. Are you trying to not give off nonverbals? Are you, what's kind of running through your mind after you've made a call like that? Well, just ma make sure that, that it, the look is there. Uh, he had the ability to get out of the fake. If they all of a sudden showed up in a balanced formation, we were kicking a field goal and taking three points. Uh, and, and we were really excited about having Reiney back uh, today. You know, it's been a long year for him. But, uh, you know, we, we felt good about it. And we had seen on the – I think we'd already scored today, and they showed us what we were looking for. And so we figured, okay, we, they, 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 they gave us the seven-by-four look. We're anticipating we're going to give it again, you know, and uh, – I probably just got to make sure I keep my cool over there because sometimes I probably get really excited about that stuff. We'll go next here on the left side and then back over to the right. I'm sorry. Alex at AM 1100, the flag in Fargo. After allowing a, a score early, how important was that first drive? Uh, it was critical. You know, the play that, that we were talking about early uh, that I think our center got beat on, on, on some 60 protection, uh, but all of a sudden Trey took off and then you saw us push him for 10. That might have been as valuable a play during the course of the game as any of them because, you know, they were up seven to nothing, and all of a sudden, I think they were, these guys are a pretty good football team. Um, you know, I know they're young, but, but you know, the Bison can play football too. And, and I, I think that was a, a, a moment during the game that our kids are probably going to hang their hat on for a long time. Back over to the right. Dom Izzo, WDAY in Fargo. First 16 0 college football team since Yale in 1894. When I say that, what's going through your mind? It, it, hard to believe. Uh, it probably won't sink in for a couple of days yet. Uh, maybe on the on the flight home. Uh, I know it'll it'll feel more real the minute I walk through these doors and go in the locker room and see these guys. Uh, just their effort, our coach's effort. Uh, you know, we, we had a uh, a lot of new faces. So I, I joke. We, we got a lot of teenagers. There are eighteen and nineteen year olds in there that. Uh, uh, have bought in to, to how we do things. They've embraced it. Uh, we got 14 unbelievable seniors that have provided leadership. We got a quarterback that is, is mature beyond his years that uh, everyone wants to be around. He just is, is that type of person. He, you want to gravitate to people like him because they make you better. Um, yeah, I'm excited, of, so excited for the senior class uh, when there were some doubts, a lot of, a lot of transition. Just like Jackson said, we had this D coordinator who was going to try to be head coach. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't thank everyone enough. We'll go over here in the second row on the left and then back over to the right. Dash Menzel, Bison Information Network. Um, do you feel like the offsides penalties today were induced to, like, you know, antsiness or excitement? You know, uh, I think we were listening play? too much to the, to the vocal cadence or, or of, the, of the quarterback and not watching the football enough. Uh, probably a discipline thing that we need to get rectified. I'll worry about it in spring. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to the right and then one more on the left. Ross Huglin, Bison Report. Was Josh Hayes working through some stuff, or was that just a normal rotation? He came in and out of the game, and then describe the, the quality of that play that he made when they threw the, the stacked screen, and he was one on two and tackle for loss. 
Josh continue. He's battled some some injuries during the course of the year. I mean, we played 16 games, uh, and, and and there's a lot of reps. You know, but when you play 16 games, you also practice another another week, and so there's those reps as well on top of it. You know, Destin has given us great depth all year, and you know has he played like a veteran? Not all the time, but these reps that he's gotten when he can rotate with Marquise uh, and and Josh are going to prepare him for the future. Uh, and I know we don't want to talk too much about the future, but uh, you know those are unbelievably valuable reps. The last three weeks have been valuable to our football team and to a future of our team. Here in the second row on the left. Uh, Ian Longton, NDSU Spectrum. Coach, you mentioned how young your team is. Can you talk about uh, how you saw them grow from Butler to now? Just confidence, uh, you know, being able to, to handle the, the, the weekly – demands of, of being a bison uh you know i think i think one of the stats and, and again i know we've we've had some we have some issues we got things we got to continue to clean up there's there's no there hasn't been a perfect game yet we're still striving for it but when you start looking at our body of work on the football field being 16 and 0 and then you know our our semester gpa for the young group was the highest ever as a division one program at close to a 3.15 um, I think that says a lot about our kids just buying into the message, believing in each other, uh, and, and taking a lot of pride in being Bison. Take one more question here in the front row. Coach Brad, uh, Super Talk 1270. How different was James game planning for James Madison compared to other teams you've played this season? Well, you know, I, I don't know. You know, we went about our, our pr the process the, the same way. Now, they have a number of, of, of talented football players, a roster full of, full of talent. Uh, you know, they, they got uh, a ton of transfers at, at positions. I, I'm so glad to see Riley Stapleton finally going to be done. You know, I, I, didn't, I forgot he was a sophomore in 17 when we saw him. Big physical receiver. You know, they, they got some great players. But, um, you know, we, we just went about it and, 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 and tried to put our kids in the best situation to be successful during the course of the week. And uh, our kids continue to try to execute. Was it, was it pretty all the time? Probably not. But uh, all we asked is they need to be the best team today. And, uh, you know what, going 1-0 this week was big. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> we'll see you guys.